Hey folks, welcome to Thunder Funk Radio. Today we're going to learn how to grip a pistol. I'm going to do a separate video on how to grip a revolver. Today we're going to be focusing on your average semi-automatic pistol. Now, there are many ways to grip a pistol. And as time has moved on, we've learned better ways to grip a pistol than we have in the past. Learning more about how our bodies work and how rounds land on target, learning more about mitigating recoil. This is how I teach. If you guys have a different way that you teach people or that you grip yourself, I would love to hear about it in our comments section. So to start out, we're gonna talk about how much strength we're gonna to use to grip the pistol. That's how much pressure we're going to apply to that grip. Now everybody swung a baseball bat, correct? And when you're swinging a baseball bat, you're really cranking down on that thing with all your fingers, right? I'm not a professional baseball player, but I've swung a bat a day or two in my lifetime, and you're really cranking down on that thing. Instead, we're going to, at least for now, think of it like you grip a samurai sword. Now I know you've all done samurai swordsmanship, but I'm just gonna do this as a refresher. When you grip a samurai sword, all right, we got a lovely boke in here, we're just using the top part of our hand. We're not using the bottom part, all right? The top part allows for us to be much more fluid with this thing. Look at how samurai-esque I am right now. And then these bottom fingers are used more for balance, all right? Now they're still gripping it, but we're not cranking down on it like it's a baseball bat, okay? We're really putting our focus on our thumb and our top two fingers here. And at least starting out, that's how I'd like you to think about when you grip onto your pistol, okay? So in that manner, we're gonna take our pistol. Now, one thing you can do if you don't wanna use a real firearm is you can get a hold of one of these. These are called a blue gun. Blue guns are great. They're inert pieces of plastic. There's no way you could possibly load anything. There's no way you could possibly shoot anything. They're wonderful training tools, and they're also very visually not a real firearm. They come in bright blue, orange, pink, yellow. I think multiple colors that are very, very bright and let everybody know around you that, hey, I have an inert training tool, not an actual firearm. But I'm wearing a bright blue t-shirt, so we're not gonna use this today. I just wanted to show that this is available. Instead, we're gonna use my everyday carry, which is a Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0 five inch. That's an awful lot of syllables to say. It's kind of annoying, but I love this firearm. So I've already cleared this before we started filming, but I'm gonna show you guys a very good way to clear it to ensure, we, especially when you're training with somebody else, that there's no mistakes that are gonna be made. So first off, I'm going to make sure there's no magazine in there. If there was, I would hit the magazine release right here, and I would pull the magazine out while maintaining good muzzle awareness and making sure that I don't point at anything I don't want to destroy. Then, right here is what you call a slide lock, okay? I could just pull it back, look down into the chamber, and notice that it's clear. That's fine. But if you want those extra redundancies, and if you're working with a partner or you're on a flat range taking a class or working with other people, it's nice to have their reassurances as well. So when I'm teaching a class, what I always have people do is, and it's good to be able to do this, you want to pull your slide back on however way, I like to start from the front, and then you manipulate that slide lock. And if you can't do that yet, that is something that you should really practice so you can do. And if try as you might, you still can't, maybe look at a different firearm. The Smith & Wesson MMP, EZ380 is a wonderful firearm for people that don't have the best grip strength because it's very easy to rack the slide. I'm not necessarily a Smith & Wesson fanboy, I just happen to like a few of their firearms very, very well. So we're going to do that one more time, okay? So I'm going to, on the front of the slide, I'm going to push it back and I'm going to push that slide lock up. And then I can hand this to my buddy and they can visually inspect it. It's very important that you know how to go through all of those steps. Okay, so now that we know we're clear, I'm still gonna to try to treat this like it's loaded. I'm gonna do my best not to point at my camera guy over here, but we know that this is a safe weapon system. The very first thing we do is we're just going to grip onto the weapon like this with our non-firing hand, our non-dominant hand. All right, John, you see that? We're going to grip onto the weapon just like this. The reason we do that is now we're gonna take our dominant hand and we're gonna come up as high as we can on the back of this grip, also known as a back strap. We're gonna come up as high as possible on that because the way a pistol works, when it fires, the slide moves back like this and it's going to recoil. The lower down we have the, our grip means there's a lower fulcrum point, which means it's going to recoil even more. If we could get our hand right here, that would be best because then it would just push straight back, but also the pistol wouldn't operate, right? So we wanna get as 
We're gonna grip it like this. We know it's clear. We're gonna grip as high up as we can on this. And remember the samurai sword? We're just grabbing with this part. At first, we're just going to grab with our thumb and our top two fingers, and then we're gonna gently place those other fingers around the grip, okay? Now, this has a safety on it, much like a 1911. I am a big fan of frame-mounted safeties, each into their own. I don't like slide-mounted safeties, and I would rather have a, a manual-operated safety than not, but that's me. So I just rest my thumb right on top of there, all right? So that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna get a nice, good grip. Now, this finger, this part is really, really important. This finger right here is practically super glued to the top part of your frame, right above the trigger well. It does not come down into the trigger housing until you're ready to shoot. Boom. When you're watching a movie at home, you can tell who's had firearms training and who's not by how they, especially if they're like the hero and they're supposed to know this stuff, you can tell if they've been paying attention if they have their finger out like this. Okay, so now that we got this grip down, we're mostly gripping with these top part and then we wrap the other part down and now there's like even force throughout the whole thing. This part gets fun, okay? So I'm gonna take my thumb and I like to make sound effects because I think it helps me remember and it helps my students remember too. And I'm gonna swoosh right in there. I'm just gonna swoosh right on up into there, okay? Everybody do that with me. We're just gonna swoosh right in. Now, as far as laying your fingers down, I'd like you to think of this as a topographic map. You have your mountains right here, okay? You have your peaks and you have your valleys, okay? These two fingers, if you notice, mine are a little weird looking, but if you got these two fingers, they're gonna go right in the peaks here. And then this finger is going to get jammed right in there underneath the trigger guard. See how I did that? Now, we're gonna swoosh and then lay the fingers down. So we're gonna swoosh up there. I want the palm the pad of my palm to be able to touch this part of my palm on my other hand, the grip itself and the fingers. I understand everybody's hands and pistols and everything are different. We're going to go over multiple sizes. I wear extra large gloves. I've got big fat hands. Some people have big long skinny hands. Some people have tiny hands. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Ideally, we're going to swoosh on in there, swoosh on in there, and then we're going to lay those two fingers down. Lay those two fingers down right there in the valleys of our little topographic map, and we're gonna jam that finger in right there. Now, what do we do with this thumb? We're gonna place it right here on the frame. So everybody see that? We're gonna lay that right here on the frame. A lot of people will stipple, or they'll send it out to a stippling place. Stippling is, now that there's all these nice polymer frames, they take a little soldering iron or a melting tool, and they just add a bit of texture. You can add a piece of skateboard tape as well. There's a tool called the gas pedal. I don't think it, it's not available for every firearm, but it's available for a, a bunch, and it has this big ledge you can just put your thumb down, and that does a bunch of things. It helps stabilize your grip because you're just applying more pressure and more control to the frame. It also helps you with mitigating recoil more. So let's start at the beginning real quick here. We're going to grab our pistol just like this, and this is just for starting out. We're going to put it as high up as possible, as high up as possible on this back strap right here. I'm gonna make sure my finger is super glued right above, right above the grip. Now I got a good grip. I'm not death gripping the thing, all right? These are more for balancing. This is more for gripping. I got it on there. Now I'm gonna take my hand, and I'm gonna swoosh it right on in there, okay? And then I'm going to lay down my fingers in the valleys and I'm gonna jam that finger right underneath the trigger guard. Hope you guys can see all the, my lovely dirty fingernails. I was just planting fruit trees earlier on the property. Now I have a pretty solid grip. Now I used to grip like this back here and the top of my thumb would fall right in between my middle knuckle and I don't know what the hell this is called but it's the knuckle that attaches your thumb to your hand. All right, and that felt pretty good at first. And if you look at my arms, they're kind of parallel to each other, right? Both elbows are pointed out opposite at 45 degree angles, but this isn't the most stable way to do it. If you wanna be a bit more stable, watch what I do right here, okay? I'm gonna rotate that forward, and oh my goodness, does this feel so much better. Do I have so much more control of this pistol now, okay? And my thumb is just sitting right up here on this safety, right? It's easy to manipulate, okay? I have my thumb reaching out, and if I wanna manipulate my light, boop, 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 okay? Really, really simple to do. Now, take a look at my elbows. They're no longer perfectly perpendicular. One of them is pointing up at like, what, a 70 degree angle, while the other one's still at a 45, okay? Now, I used to almost lock my arms out. I no longer do that anymore. Whatever you wanna do is fine. 
get to where you feel comfortable, where you can mitigate the recoil, you can make consistent hits, and most importantly, you maintain a good sight picture while you pull the trigger. That's the whole point of a grip, to be secure, to have it not move while you're pulling that trigger. As long as you're on target, you're always gonna hit your target, okay? So, we're gonna review one more time. We're gonna grip the pistol, we're gonna go all the way up on the back strap here. We're gonna super glue our finger right up to the top of this thing. My thumb is resting right on this safety. If there's no safety, it just sits up right here. We'll demonstrate with another pistol in a moment. All right, then this other hand is going to swoosh on right in there, okay? We're gonna drop our fingers into the valleys. And then we're gonna jam our other finger right in here. I'm gonna make sure our thumb is nice and forward as we can. And then when we extend out, boom, we can this is completely locked out. This is kind of how I like to shoot. And now I mostly just go like this. I don't even extend out all the way, but this is after thousands and thousands of rounds of repetition and muscle memory and figuring my stuff out, okay? So there we go. That's how you grip a pistol, folks. We're gonna show you with a couple other pistols real quick. And then our editor, John, who's just getting into shooting now is gonna demonstrate for you as well. So right here we have a 1911. This is more of a modern 1911 with the extended beaver tail and the skeletonized trigger and the commander style hammer. If you're not into all that stuff, it doesn't matter. 1911s are wonderful. They're fun. Now there's multiple available. This is one of the OG firearms that influenced almost every firearm since then. But what's nice about it is this really, really nice grip angle here. It's very natural for most people. And then again, we have this grip safety right here. We can just set, set our thumb right on top of it. And so the same thing. We're going to you know, boop, boop, boop. And this is just for starting out. You don't always have to do this once you get used to it, but it does make a nice stable platform to use for you to start out. So we're gonna get nice up and high on this beaver tail, super glue our finger to the top of that trigger well. We're gonna have our thumb resting on this safety right here, okay? We're going to swoosh on in here, and same thing, we're gonna put that right over here. Now, if you notice something different, there's no light on this weapon system or on this firearm. There's no light here. So a lot of competition shooters will take their non-dominant hand pointer finger and they'll wrap it around the trigger well and I tell you what that does provide a lot of stability and it does help with recoil mitigation and it makes for faster follow-up shots the reason I don't recommend most people to learn that way at least starting out is because I believe that every defensive weapon and every fighting weapon should have a light on it you should be able to identify targets at night and almost all lights get mounted right here which means do 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 you can't put your finger right there. So that's why I just teach this way. If you're a competition shooter, great, but you probably wanna to go to a competition instructor too. That's not me. So again, instead of wrapping our finger up here, we're going to swoosh on in, find the, find the valleys, peaks and valleys, jam that finger right in there. Boom, we're ready to go. All right, so no safety, here is a older earlier sig p320 compact so same thing now, if you notice this is a much smaller grip here now i have two magazines that are completely flush and i have others that are extended out that give my pinky a little place to go but there's no place for it to go right now well i'm just going to deal with it that's also why i'm making sure that these top fingers are the ones that are actually gripping this firearm okay same thing do 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 there we go you see what i'm doing and this thumb just rests right on top of my other hand it's super simple Boom. And as long as you have a good grip, yeah, the recoil on smaller firearms of similar caliber to larger firearms is going to be more. You just ride it and put it back on target and go again. Let's try another one. This is a Smith & Wesson Shield. I know a lot of people that carry this from like housewives to former tier one operators. This is a good firearm. This also has a safety, if you notice right here. And it's a smaller grip. We're gonna do the same thing. This pinky just kind of hangs out. I have one magazine that's flush, and then I have three that extend out and give a nice place for my pinky. So the same thing here. You notice how I'm doing this. Boom, finger right here. I'm gonna swoosh my hand up into here. I'm gonna drop my fingers down. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. We're ready to go. Let's try something else. Got a big boy here, but not all meets the eye. This is very similar to what I carried for eight years when I was in the Army Infantry but this is a 22 long rifle. I bought this to teach people how to shoot. If you notice, there's the safeties on the slide and not on the frame, but same thing. We got a nice beaver tail. That's what this thing that sticks out. Some pistols have them, some don't. We're gonna come up nice and tall on here. We're gonna put our finger right above that trigger well. We're gonna swoosh on in there. And if you notice, there's a different size gap between all the pistols that I'm showing you. I'm gonna swoosh right in here. 
plant that thumb right here, drop my fingers into the valleys. Boom, look at that. There we go. There we go. All right, now look at this guy. Look at the difference. Look at the difference in sizes between these guys, right? This is a 70% scale of a full-size government 1911. It's the Rock Island Armory Baby Rock. Ain't it cute? I like it a lot. Now it's a tiny little grip, yet I'm gonna do the same thing, okay? We're just gonna whoosh, pop in there, and boom. It's the same thing. It's just a lot skinnier, but I'm using the exact same grip, just changing a couple little things on it for each size pistol. And now the last guy, the Extreme. This is a Ruger uh, LC380. This is the version one, if you're gonna get one. I think the extra 100 bucks is worth getting the, the, the LC382 has slightly better sight, slightly better grip, but look at how tiny this guy is. I can barely get two fingers around it, but I got the two most important fingers around it. I got this guy and my thumb. We're nice and high up on the back strap here. We're going to do the same thing. Now, how do I swoosh in here, right? How do I swoosh in here if it's so, you, you, you just figure it out. You just put your hands up, you stick them on there, right through here, boom. Okay, now, with this, barely any with my big meaty hands is touching this grip on my non-dominant hand. Yet, I can still shoot this accurately. Yes, it feels like it recoils more than my great big boy right here, but that's okay. There's only one way to grip this. Every pistol you get, kind of like every car you get, is gonna be a compromise. A minivan is really good at some things. A Corvette is really good at other things. It's the same thing. This is really good at being concealed. It's lightweight. You can carry it all day and almost forget that it's there but it is more difficult to shoot, okay? But you still have a solid grip on this thing. This, on the other hand, is a breeze to shoot. This thing's more accurate than I am. I can hit an eight inch steel target at 150 yards with this thing. I absolutely love this pistol, but it is sometimes a pain in the butt, sometimes a pain in the butt to carry, okay? Everything's a compromise. All right, folks, now with the infamous blue gun. One of the reasons I wanted to do this is because it's also a Glock, and Glock is one of the hands-down most common pistols you'll come across. Uh, they're very reliable. I'm not personally a Glock guy, although I would trust them with my life. I just don't like the grip angle. Okay, so real quick, we're going to do the same thing, okay? We're going to grip the top. We're going to find, go nice up and high on the back strap, all right? And then we're going to swoosh our hand right in there. We're going to drop our fingers into those valleys and avoid, instead of the peaks. We're gonna jam that top finger right in there. We're gonna make sure our thumb is resting on the frame. This other finger is super glued on there until we find our threat. Boop, or our target, or our pop can, or whatever. Boop, boop, boop. And if you see, a lot of modern pistols have this curved or flat trigger guard, and that's to put your finger up there. And yes, it does help mitigate recoil, and no, I do not teach that technique because I teach defensive and combat shooting, and I think every pistol that you use defensively, if possible, should have a light on it. They're fairly inexpensive, they're very reliable, they don't take up a lot of extra weight and space, they are a force multiplier that will keep you and your family safer. So I just wanted to add one more exercise here. This might seem kind of silly, but I'm right-handed and so I'm gripping with my right hand, but one thing I'll often do is I will try to grip it with my left hand and it feels weird. There's not a lot of practical application for that, but I recommend trying it because if you can grip it perfectly with your left hand, all right, and man, yeah, that does feel weird, doesn't it? If you can grip it perfectly with your left hand and your right hand, left hand, right hand, if you can switch back and forth between those, you're going, your dominant hand is gonna have a much better grip. It's kind of like taking apart your gun with blindfolded. Not only are you gonna be able to do it then in the dark, but you're also gonna be able to do it better when you can see it because you're just more familiar with it. And you're also gonna be better able to teach. I teach a lot of lefties and teaching it right-handed is okay. You can pick it up, but if I teach it left-handed, they can pick it up easier. So try both. It's kind of it's kind of trippy, but definitely try both. But that's how you grip a pistol. Now we're gonna have our camera guy, John, who's just getting into this. He's gonna come up and demonstrate how he grips his pistol. Hey everybody, uh, I'm John the editor. I'm just uh, starting to get into uh, pistol, pistol shooting and uh, so I'm uh, gonna uh, show, off, uh, show off my grip. Okay, so first I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear this thing. I've got it right here. And John, what is that? Uh, Star 
something something model bm star model bm as i recall you said this is a spanish this is a spanish is surplus pistol spanish surplus pistol maybe maybe used by a cop yep all right so first clearing this guy out um then let's see Oops. so clear the little dummy dummy around there all right, check that. Um, let's see. Yep. Got the slide, slide back there. So look up, look down. And now he can hand it off to his buddy if he wants to. Yeah. His buddy's holding the camera right now. Yeah. So. All right. So. All right. So grabbing it. Firstly, non-dominant hand. That comes up right there. Right there, right there. Um, and then swoosh. Right there. Nice. And John shooting with both eyes open. All right, let's see the other side here. With this POV camera uh, or the close up. Uh, How's that feel, John? Pretty good. Pretty good. Like it's a, it's a like this is a nice size. At least for me that. For, for me, that is. All right. So, how long did it take you to get your good grip? Um, it like it took some took some practice because, I mean, I I I mean, when we were going over this last, I like my I my thumb would go to places where where they shouldn't actually shouldn't actually go. And the other the other thing the other thing that you pointed out was uh, my pointer finger not going quite as high up here as it should. It, mm -hmm. as it should go and that was an issue that I, I was having and sort of took some practice to sort of get um kind of get the get it to the point where it's you know but it wasn't a lot it was just like no. a bit here and there that was yeah cool. so all right okay I'm trying to remember what uh, what you and michael did in the last video give your hand a home yeah nice Nice. Point it over in this direction here so I can see the close up. A little bit further. A little bit that way to the. There we go. Look at that grip. All right. Thank you, John. Say goodbye. You're very everybody. welcome. All right, folks. That's how you grip a pistol. If you do it differently, let us know in the comments. I would love to learn something new from you. You can learn a lot from videos like these and you can practice in the safety and comfort of your own home, but we do recommend getting professional training as well, going to classes. And if you do this stuff first, before you go to the classes, you're actually gonna be that much more ahead. You're gonna feel less awkward if you're a newbie. You're gonna understand a lot of the fundamentals first and that way you're going to get your money's worth out of those classes. So if you liked this video, I'd appreciate if you'd share it with people. If you could give us a like and a subscribe, that would mean a lot. We have a lot of really cool instructional and educational content coming and uh yeah i think that's about it right yep yep thanks folks like share and subscribe and all that jazz and do push-ups all right later